Hello everyone, welcome back to Leah Loses Her Mind on the internet. Today I am going to run you through some of my favourite independent bookstore purchases. For those of you that don't know, I am a big independent bookstore advocate. So much so that my Instagram account's name is Indie Book Advo because I thought Indie Bookstore Advo was too long and sounded dumb. But right now, independent bookstores aren't something that anyone can visit and that is actually doing quite a detrimental thing to their industry, to uh, their purchasing and buying because a lot of people are using larger wholesale names uh, whom I won't get into because one of them I work inside of. Not for though, not for, they don't want me. Um, Cause I'm too loud. <laughs> A few videos ago I mentioned that I had bought online My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshe. Still don't know if that's right. Need someone to tell me. Moshe? Moshe. And when I bought this, I bought this through a website called hive.co.uk. If anyone ever clicks on the extra bits underneath my videos, you may or may not notice that is a website that every time I mention a book I end up listing it through hive.co.uk because at checkout you can register the sale of the book towards an independent bookstore whether it's one near you or whether it's one you love and you therefore are able to look it up in their database so when i bought this i registered the sale towards a bookstore in york which i love and i will uh give a shout out to later on in this video um and i just think that's a really nice way at the moment if people are able to to buy their books at the moment. A lot of bookstores that are independent don't have online catalogues of everything they have in stock. So this is a really great way to just kind of give give the business a little bit of a boost, give it a bit of recognition during these times, because it would be really sad if at the end of all this, a lot of independent businesses had to shut because they can't sell anywhere near as much as they can uh, when people come in and face to face deal with them. So I'm just gonna show you guys some of the books I have bought in the last 12 months from independent bookstores. Uh, I am also, I wanna say, one of those people that I will look up books on Goodread. Goodreads? Goodread. My brain stopped working today. Ah! I will like have a list of things I want to buy, want to read. Um, but when I'm in a store, if I see a book I like the look of, I don't go looking, I don't try and figure out like what other people think of it. I'm just a big fan of like, I guess trying to find like little hidden gems and then just going into it completely blind, knowing nothing about it. It's a little bit of pride and snobbery being like, haha, I found this on my own. So the first bookstore I'm going to give a shout out to is actually not accessible on our shorelines. Um, before lockdown, before quarantine, before corona hit the UK, literally a week before, I was in Portugal and on the way to Portugal I took a bunch of trains because of environmental guilt. Which meant I had three hours in Paris and um, I kind of already knew what I was going to do when I got there. I had done my research so it wasn't like, oh I randomly wandered and stumbled upon it. No. This bitch was looking specifically for Shakespeare and Co. Shakespeare and Co is an English language bookstore in Paris. It's beautiful inside. You're not meant to take photos, but if you go on the internet, obviously a hundred people have because people don't know how to act. Um, but it was so great. I walked in, it was absolutely beautiful. They were playing Joni Mitchell over the radio, which reminded me of my best friend. So I was just feeling so calm so zened out, so blissful. I bought a tote from them, so now I'm walking around with a Shakespeare & Co tote. It cost me £20 and I do not regret a single thing. So while I was there, I bought two books. The first one was by Cho Namju, Kim Ji Young, born 1982. And then the other one I bought was uh, Strange Antics, A History of Seduction by Clement Knox. Uh, this one I had heard of beforehand and I was really interested in. I've since read it and it's really good. Um, it's a little bit in your face feminism, which I'm not mad at. I like subtlety every now and then, but the message that comes through in the book is so just important to recognise. And the last chapter is really clever and kind of ties it together really nicely. 
Um, but it's basically looking at how women are viewed in South Korea, um, like their experiences in employment and motherhood and marriage and education. And it's really good to try and step out of your little white feminist bubble every now and then and remember how different countries, different cultures view women, deal with women and their struggles, um, how women deal with misogyny and terrible, terrible office situations. I just remembered that. Um, it was a great book. You should read it. <laughs> also, something that was really cool in Shakespeare and Co was if you wanted to, they stamped the front of your book. Can you see it? Can you see it? So now it's like a special edition that I can never get rid of. It's a souvenir. It reminds me of a time when I was listening to Joni Mitchell, remembering my best friend and being super excited to go on a great holiday, completely unaware of the horrors that would come the following week. The other book I bought was Strange Antics, A History of Seduction by Clement Knox. I was meant to do a master's in women's studies this year uh, over at University of York. I got into a red brick, can you believe it? <laughs> I had never heard of it when I went to the store. This was one I mostly looked at because the cover is beautiful. But yeah, this is just a non-fiction book about the history of seduction. The first chapter itself is really interesting. Uh, I'm only a chapter in because it's a brick. But also half of it is references like, I really have no excuse. Let me find it. All of that is like end notes and references. So in reality, the book is only that big. Still freaking huge. Still could build a house. I still want to read it though. Next bookshop I'm going to give a shout out to is one in York. It's who I registered my sale for rest and relaxation with. It is the, L the Little Apple Bookstore. L -l 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 -l. It's brilliant. Me and my best friend came across it by accident. And then it turns out it was my best friend's girlfriend's favorite place. So it was just like the universe coming together. So I bought three books in the past from the Little Apple bookstore. Uh, I only have one of them with me because I've lent two others out. They are Daisy Joan and the Six by Taylor Jenkin Reid and also Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. The other book I bought from the Little Apple bookstore was Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Um, this is translated from Polish. I have for the last 12 months I've been trying to expand my um, translated fiction knowledge, not just read a bunch of Japanese translated books because that's pretty much all I had at one point. I think I wanted to like it more than I did. I think I went into it thinking it was going to be like an amazing groundbreaking book, but I also think I was kind of hard on myself because I didn't like inhale it all in two days. Therefore, my brain was like, well, then you didn't enjoy it. That's stupid and wrong. I want to reread it at some point with my new adjusted mindset that tells me you can enjoy a book and not have to read it competitively. But the Little Apple Bookstore is one of those that doesn't have an internet website, which is why I use Hive UK to register sales towards it. Honestly, I'm really sad right now that I don't have an affiliate link for Hive.co.uk. I would be boring. Another bookstore I visited in the year of 2019 was the Lighthouse Bookshop in Edinburgh because I had four days off and went for a trip to Edinburgh. It's great there. I understand why everyone loves it. Um, while I was there, I bought Zadie Smith, Swing Time. I had never read Zadie Smith. Everyone says, oh, you like feminism? You should read Zadie Smith. So I bought one. I bought one I'd never heard of rather than like NQ or Grand Central, which I know had just come out because where I work, People were like squatting totes of it and posters, it was really cool. And I was not involved because I didn't know who she was. <laughs> it dealt with a lot. It dealt with class, it dealt with race, it dealt with like friendships, female relations. It dealt with fame and like uh, rich people doing charity work in third world countries and how like amazing that is and also how maybe not amazing that is because are they doing with it are they doing it with an agenda i don't know but the lighthouse bookstore was so lovely in there everyone was really nice um they hosted a lot of events and stuff which i think is really cool 
Uh, I just thought it was so much fun in there and it had such a great range. So if you're ever in Scotland, go there. <laughs> The next one I'm going to talk about a lot of people, if they're aware of independent bookstores, know a lot about already. It's Gaze the Word, down in London. It was so close to Euston Station, I was kind of kicking myself that any other time I'd ever been to London, I hadn't gone looking for it. But when I was there, oh boy, oh baby, oh mama. As the name suggests, Gaze the Word's an LGBT-focused uh, bookstore. I was so close to spending like £60 in there, but then, I held myself back, I had self-restraint, and instead I picked up People in Trouble. I don't currently have that with me, I've lent that out to a friend. It's a fiction book set during the AIDS crisis about a married couple and a third individual. I'll leave it at that. It was one of those things, again, I think it's good to try and use books if you can to educate yourself a little bit about stuff you didn't know about too much necessarily. I can hold my hands up. Hetty white feminist, I'm very sorry. So I uh, have never read that much into the AIDS crisis. I've not really looked into the impact of all of that in New York City in particular. Eventually I intend to get that book back from my friend and read it. I didn't think I would want to be reading it so soon, but I also didn't think we would be inside for seven weeks. So, and then the final book store I'm gonna give a shout out to is one in Liverpool, it's called News From Nowhere and they advertise themselves as a radical bookstore. These guys do have an internet presence, so yeah, in any videos where I've linked books, if I haven't been able to find them in stock on Hive, then I have referenced people to News From Nowhere. They had so many different sections and they like labelled all of their shelves some really great things. For example, this one about anti-capitalism, but this was another bookstore where I went in and I didn't have any set books that I wanted at the time. There was nothing I was like, I need to read that. So the two books that I bought from News From Nowhere that I'm going to show you are the short story collection Lake Like a Mirror uh, by Ho Sok Fung. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce it. And I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. Now this is a collection of short stories by women in Malaysia. Short story books, I think, are best when you're reading something like non-fiction in between. That's just how I enjoy them. Um, so I haven't got all the way through it, but as I say, just stumbling upon it was awesome. I don't know a lot about life in Malaysia. I don't know about how uh, Malaysian women have to deal with anything at all. Completely ignorant to it. I feel like a lot of the time fiction based in Asia can focus specifically on East Asian stuff, or at least the stuff that I have come into contact with. So again, I kind of picked this book up because I wanted to educate myself a little bit more. I wanted to see like what life was like in other parts of the world and try and be less ignorant to everyone all the time. So that's fun. And then the other one was I Who Have Never Known Men, which was great. It was so fun. I was reading it and I thought a lot about The Water Cure, which I'd read last year um, by Sophie McIntosh. And then it turns out um, Sophie McIntosh wrote the introduction to it. So maybe there's a reason I was drawing com uh, comparisons. I am clearly not the first person to have done that. But it's a dystopian fiction where 40 women are kept prisoner in an underground lair? I don't know, cage, to be honest, it's a cage, and 39 of them knew life before. They knew civilization. they remember being taken prisoner, being brought down into this cage under the ground. The 40th one was a baby, they were surprised she even survived, and it kind of follows her life as they escape, and deal with the world outside. So this girl as well, she has no concept of love, of really physical contact or affection, um, and she doesn't understand men. She's never had to. How that shapes her views, how that shapes her perception of herself is just quite wonderfully reflected in this. Um, it was really interesting. As I say, if you enjoyed The Water Cure, I could see you maybe enjoying this because it really felt like the two could have been inspired by each other. It makes sense that they chose the author of that book to 
write about this one. So that is it. That is every book I have bought from an independent bookstore in the last 12 months. Um, I'm aware I'm coming from a place maybe of privilege. Um, some people, for one reason or another, will not be able to purchase books independently. They will use larger internet websites that don't pay the taxes. Um, but if you are able to, I think it would be nice to maybe just consider, maybe have a look-ski. Also sometimes I find, in particular on Hive.co.uk, who have not sponsored this video, I want to make that clear, but if anyone wants to try and help me get an affiliate link, that would be dope. A lot of the times the books they sell on those websites are actually cheaper anyway than regular retail price because they act as a stockist for a lot of independent bookstores. That's how these bookstores end up on their database, that's how you register the sales. I hope everyone's doing okay, I hope everyone's staying as safe as they can, as sane as they can. Lord knows the last couple of weeks have got harder. Um, never before have I felt so sad, so lonely. So my parents might watch this, so let's stop there. Uh, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.